Hi, friends. Today we will learn what is a cell. So let's start. Our Earth has a variety of living organisms. Just like how a house is made up of bricks, a living organism is made up of cells. All animals, birds, fish, all kinds of plants and trees, humans, insects, and microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and other things that we can't even see with our naked eye are all made up of cells. All of these organisms are composed of at least one cell. For example, some organisms are made up of only one cell. Only one cell and such organisms are called unicellular. And all other organisms that are made up of more than one cell are known as multicellular organisms. So, the cell is the smallest unit of life that is self-contained and self-maintaining. A cell can take in nutrients, convert the nutrients into energy, carry out specialized function, and can also reproduce. The cell is the smallest unit of life. As we learned, some organisms are made up of a single cell. And we know every organism needs some sort of energy. It needs to digest its food, it needs to excrete, it needs to exchange gases, and it needs movement. So, all these activities are performed by a single cell. We will learn about unicellular organisms in our next section. Diatoms, also called phytoplankton, yeast, slime moles, bacteria, protozoa are all examples of unicellular organisms. We can't see them with our naked eyes, we can only see them with a microscope. And I repeat, all life processes like fast reproduction, feeding, digestion, excretion occur in the same cell. Different parts of the single cell perform these different functions. On the other hand, some organisms are made up of many cells working together and are called multicellular organisms. And all organisms like humans, animals such as frogs, cats, rabbits, earthworms, and insects, and all other types of organisms are multicellular. In these organisms, groups of cells join together and form tissues which in turn group together to form organs, which then join together to form an organ system. And we know all organ systems work together and function like a body. A human body is said to have a hundred trillion cells or even more. All types of cells have some common characteristics that make them living things. They all contain DNA as a heritable genetic material, and they can also reproduce. We will learn more about this in our next section. For now, you need to remember that a cell is a living thing, and it possesses all characteristics of a living thing. All living organisms can be sorted into one of two groups. Depending on the fundamental structure of their cells, these two groups are prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Organisms with eukaryotic cells are called eukaryotes. Organisms with prokaryotic cells are called prokaryotes. Eukaryotes can be unicellular or multicellular organisms. Prokaryotes are always unicellular organisms. Eukaryotic cells have a nucleus that stores its DNA. Eukaryotes have a linear DNA. Prokaryotic cells have no nucleus. DNA floats freely in the cytoplasm and that area is called a nucleoid. So, eukaryotes have a nucleus and prokaryotes have no nucleus. And, Prokaryotes have a circular DNA. 
whereas eukaryotes have a linear DNA. Eukaryotic cells contain membrane-bound organelles, whereas prokaryotic cells have no membrane-bound organelles. These organelles enable the compartmentalization of cell functions and also organize the space inside the cell. Prokaryotic cells are way simpler as they have no membrane-bound organelles, but they are still able to perform complex functions like eukaryotic cells do. Both unicellular or multicellular organisms can have eukaryotic cells. An example of eukaryotes are humans, plants, fungi, insects, birds, and all types of animals. Only unicellular organisms have prokaryotic cells. Examples of prokaryotes are bacteria and archaea. So we have learned all the organisms from animals to birds to insects to humans and to plants and all of these are made up of cells. And all types of cells are categorized into two types, eukaryotes and prokaryotes. All organisms can be categorized into prokaryotes and eukaryotes. We have also learned that prokaryotes are way simpler with no organelles, whereas eukaryotic cells are way complex because they have many organelles. We also learned that prokaryotic cells have no nucleus, but an area where DNA floats freely, and that area is called a nucleoid. And in the case of a nucleoid, there is a well-defined nucleus that contains the DNA of the cell. Now, let's learn a few interesting points. Each and every cell stores its own set of instructions for carrying out its metabolic activities. Humans are estimated to have 100 trillion cells or even more. The largest known cell is an ostrich egg. Prokaryotic cells are said to be the oldest form of life on this earth. They are said to have existed 3.8 to 4 billion years ago. So friends, we have learned what is a cell the two basic types of cells, and the two basic types of organisms. We will learn about the cell, its structure, and its parts in more detail during our next section.